Hi guys, welcome to Four Stripes Fast Facebook Live video. We're here today to discuss nutrition for BJJ and we're with the team from Bionna Quantix. So we have Dr. Justin Gregory, nutritionist, Miles Price, and we've got Beastie right next to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name's Amelia, I'll be asking the questions that you'll want to know today. And um, so let's get started. So first of all, could you just tell us what is Bionic Quantix and what do you guys do? Yeah, sure. So um, essentially, we're, we're, we're empowering people to know themselves better. We're asking people to take a bit more responsibility for their, their health and also their goals and fitness. So their health, Great. sensitivities and even their DNA. Um, we have really high quality supplements so we believe that supplement when it's tailored is an important part of health and performance and we also have many different functional tests where we can look into people and help optimize their health so it's really about helping people to be the best versions of themselves whether it be you're the office worker and it's to do with wellness or you're on the mats with jiu-jitsu um, and that's how we do it um, yeah so, yeah, so, we're, so we're building a, a big electronic platform as well, and it's, um, it's hopefully going to be out end of first quarter next year, where you know we can take all this information about the individual we acquire through testing, you know their vitamin levels, their nutrient levels, their genetic predispositions, hormone levels, a whole barrage of amino acids and the rest and the rest of it, and we're giving this information to to the person themselves on a companion where they can go and visit, they can see the test results. Uh, but much more than that, drawing from this information we can acquire about the individual, it's going to advise them on a daily basis um, how they should be training, uh, how they should be eating. It's going to build them a meal plan um, you know, with different macronutrient ratios. It's going it's to give them a training plan. It's going to tell them how stressed their body is with uh, the technology we also use for HIV technology that JK is uh, loving at the moment. You know. <laughs> it's all just about training smarter, living smarter, staying up to my health, you know, catching catching disease before it actually takes hold. Right. You know, making the most of yourself, getting the most of yourself, knowing yourself. I want to say be optimal. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, know yourself, be optimal. Um, the other know. thing I'd like to point out as well is um, we have quite a diverse range of people in the company, you've got Red with us, he does, uh, he's, fights MMA, Justin himself is a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu, I'm a purple belt under Nick Brooks, uh, Mill Hill, uh, so yeah, we, <laughs> we've, got, we've done a lot well in Judo as well, yeah. like, uh, myself and Beastie, so, um, yeah. and Miles obviously has a, a very big, you know, a large amount of knowledge when it comes to nutrition, wellness and the health side, so we're trying to cover all those bases. Okay, well, yeah. welcome. Good to have you guys. So let's move on to your first question. So um, what should uh, the general BJJ practitioner be eating for recovery? Right. Um, you know, I was with JK yesterday. We were having a coffee and he was smashing French toast and maple <laughs> syrup and bananas. Is that, <laughs> is that something that's okay, or should we be paying more attention? To well, that, that wouldn't be my first choice of a recovery uh, <laughs> meal, to be honest. Um, I think that the elements of recovery have to be uh, thought about in a much more sort of scientific way, and I'd, I'd like to think when you've finished a, a bout um, of, of uh, BJJ, you need to support the muscles to recover. The muscles need to recover and repair, so that requires protein. Mm -hmm. And uh, protein combined with a little bit of fats and a little bit of carbs is actually the best recovery. Um, but protein is the first choice. Okay. Um, and to help the muscles recover, you need to be in a state of relaxed state. You need to be in a, a relaxed state. When you're still hyper from the, from the fight, you may not have that ability to absorb the protein. You need to be in a relaxed state to absorb the protein. Uh, and that's all related to your stress levels and so on. So 
um, okay. yeah, it's really important mm. to be relaxed. So, because a lot of the time, um, people seem to think that they need to have a protein shake directly after they finish their training session. That's, Is that that's that, that's advisable as well? Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, and it also depends on the frequency of their fights. So, if they're fighting every day, I definitely recommend that as a as a daily requirement. Um, but if it's infrequent then you know more of a balanced meal recovery would be would be advisable right yeah. so for for someone who takes jiu jitsu more as a hobby yes. and perhaps they only train you know a couple of times a week yeah. compared to someone who takes it more seriously maybe they train a couple of times a day yeah that, that's those those people the where difference. they need protein more often because right. they're putting their muscles through a much more vigorous intensive workout and that every time you work out, there's going to be a slight muscle damage, which needs repairing. Mm -hmm. And so repair requires amino acids and proteins. So that's why each time when you do that, we need to have that window of giving proteins at that time. Okay. Yeah. I mean, athletes training twice a day as well. They're, they're quite special creatures. You know, there's, there's quite a difference between someone who trains six times a week, twice a day, compared with someone who trains like three or four times a week. You know, they're both really got the same sort of dietary requirements. You've got to have a good diet, you know, the protein, you know, the frequent protein going in is key. You know, protein after exercise is key because you've had a bit of a fasting state since your previous meal and you want to be protein frequently. That's essentially it. Mm -hmm. it I was going to ask, like, I always, you always hear, I know you mentioned about the post workout window, do you have to have yeah. it immediately? I mean, yeah, I actually don't know the answer, but I've always kind of assumed that part of it, you know, there is a sort of, it's always that thing of like, what's bro science and what's, mm, totally. you know, yeah. and what's, you totally. know, is yeah. there a window, is there a magic window? Um, I don't think there is strictly like that. I mean, it's just more of you should be having so protein right. frequently. You know, you've been fasted, mm -hmm. now it's time yeah. to get protein. Yeah. Whether that's in you know, a strict window there, it's probably sensible. Have some protein, you haven't had protein for a while, you've been training. You need these building blocks to repair, you know. Um, Blood's you know, pumping. Right? You know, for different people as well. I mean, you, you, your questions leaning towards that. The, the whole carbohydrate thing. Do you have carbohydrate? Don't you? You know, that's very down to the individual themselves on many different levels. Um, you know, you know where, what your body composition is like. Whether you train twice a day. Um, you know, whether you know your genetic makeup and the rest of it as well. You know. It would be sensible for an athlete training six times a week, twice a day, to have a bit of carbohydrate after a workout. Um, for someone that's trying to improve their body composition, it's not 8% body fat mm -hmm. or 17% for a woman, let's say. Um, yeah, you, you know, you can have, if, you, if you're that sort of percentage, yeah, have some, you know, A, recovery with a bit of carbohydrate. But for someone that's, you know, anything above that, you know, who's not coming up, he's not two weeks up from the competition, you know, maybe consider just having the protein, it's the protein that's important, you know, that's going to aid. As soon as you have carbohydrate, you're going to kick the body out from a state of, like, burning fat into burning glucose, you know, right. as soon as you do that, you're going to get an insulin spike, so... But I think there's a lot of confusion these days, mainly due to the fact that there's so many different diets, a lot yeah. of people are confused, half of them say carbs are terrible they're the enemy like don't even look at one some of them yeah. say you need carbs sure if you are trying to lose weight a lot of people mm. say okay reduce your carbs but yeah. how is there a time period that you should be completely cutting out carbs <laughs> or should people be so afraid of carbs basically no i, th I think yeah i mean you hit it in the head there straight away with some people say you can and they eat them and they do well and some people can't say you can't they don't have many carbs and they do well in that, you know, trying to do a one six all approach to this is, is not going to work. You know, some of us do need more carbohydrates, some of us don't need so much carbohydrate. Is that um, more listening to your body or how would you really know? It's quite difficult. You can spend 10 years of quite methodical approach to it, trying higher carb diets or cutting it out. <laughs> Me myself, it's, you know, I've had to go through this process as a judo player, you know, I used to sit around like, 12-13% body fat and this sort of stuff and that's an experiment, you know, more fats, less carbs, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I'm really saying here is, you know, there are toolkits out there now that you can actually look directly at this, you know, our DNA test, you know, we can have a look at particular genetic um, polymorphisms you've got or which ones you actually do have and it will say something about 
your carbohydrate metabolism. Whether, okay. you know, in essence, you know, do you store it or do you burn it straight away? Or use it straight away? And similar sort of respect and fats as well. And yeah. you also said something about your exercise response too. So there are, there is really good solid research out there. We work with Louisiana State University and uh, yeah, there's the tools at our disposal. So you don't have to guess and you don't have to spend a decade anymore to do it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's not really just like, oh, if I eat carbs and get fat, okay, so I can't no. eat carbs anymore. I think sometimes as well, people, people probably focus on eating carbs, not eating carbs. Like yeah. the, the toast and the, what was it, maple syrup? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's also, it's, it's also about, there's carbs and there's carbs yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 There's carbs you should avoid, yeah. and that, that's probably like a yeah. bit of a myth yeah. that it's in there. Yeah, all carbs are bad, actually. You know, a lot of our meals, you know, we're trying to avoid the grains, we're trying to avoid high glycemic loads. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very sugary carbs that we're trying to avoid. You know, yeah, you want the slow burning ones that are going to, you know, give you an even spread of energy over over hours that don't overload your liver. So the liver says, oh man, what's all this? You know, I've got to store yeah. some of that. Like, yeah. So, so people yeah. should be looking for the GI they should. of carbs. Yeah. Okay, so what are like some examples that, you know, people can have for people who don't really know the difference? Sure. Mars, you yeah, Mars, here we go. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can do things like uh, looking at um, complex carbs. So what we do, we put meals together which have things like sweet potato. Uh, you can do squash, pumpkin. These kind of complex carbs are very good because they have a lot of nutrients, plus they have energy, a lot of calories. Um, compare that to, um, say, vegetables, which have the more fibre. You've got cabbage, you've got broccoli, you've got uh, cauliflower, these kind of brassica-type vegetables. So we want to have a mixture of both the starchy carbs there and the more fibrous vegetables, and you're still going to get a lot of good, good calories, a lot of good energy, good nutrients, and that will provide the balance of what we need in a, in a macronutrient meal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, again, steering away from grains is my focus, trying not to have bread, pasta, those kind of things I'm, I'm not a big fan of. Um, a lot of people are Very inadvertently sen sensitive to gluten which you find in these foods and gluten yeah. is, uh, uh, is, a, is something which a lot of people don't know they're sensitive to but we can actually test for. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan of just being sensitive, to, sen sensible to knowing what you're, uh, what you, what you're sensitive to. Yeah. Uh, so that's your, one thing, Mars, actually, you, you taught me something last week. You told me about how gluten free is actually. Like, I, I, like genuinely, before Mars told me this, you know, I thought you know, gluten free is, is a safer alternative, but Mars, we educated. Yeah, Mars. so gluten free is actually um, the red herring because what it is, you get gluten free, which has proteins in the, in the bread, for example, which are similar to the proteins you get in gluten based foods. And so the immune system, your body, doesn't know the difference. Really? So it's actually a marketing gimmick to suggest that gluten-free is safer than, than gluten. That's really interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. You so. see a lot of people, I mean, the gluten-free like market yeah, yeah, yeah. is so yeah, exploded. Absolutely. People are like every, yeah. all about gluten-free these days. Yeah. So it's safer to stick to Not real foods. Real, real yeah. foods, real starchy vegetables as opposed to um, grain-based starches, which I find mm. can right. cause a lot of people it's issues. Good, it's good seeds out there as well. Kimwa is very good. Mm -hmm. Slower GI, you know, or koi seed even. That's koi good. seed? Koi seed. Oh, okay. What was that? Never heard of that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, no. Well, you're eating our meals. Isn't that too <laughs> I don't eat the meals, but I should. <laughs> No, now you just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will start no, eating meals when I find out. Why meant to be? Yeah, sorry. So, what did you have? What did you eat, JK? What was your meal? The, uh, oh, French toast, caramel rice, uh, banana, lots okay. of sugar, and syrup. Yes, so, it, he actually so, added another thing. 25 minutes before training, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't eat that. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you want an inflamed body, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, talking about um, having an inflamed body and coming back to recovery, um, is recovery obviously you're trying to reduce the inflammation in your body? Sure. Um, so, what are the ways that people can do that? What foods should you be eating to specifically reduce the inflammation? I, th I mean, I think it comes with, sorry, Mars. Um, you're so the same as me, I'm sure, but it just comes from a general approach to your diet. You know, you want a diet that's high in glutathione-containing foods, 
high in anti-inflammatory foods in general think eat lots of collard greens and these kind of things so if you can eat lots of inflammatory foods it will aid recovery you okay know, that sort so of thing or being, minimize yeah, yeah being you know, sensible about it yeah sure you know you'd be observant of your omega-3 omega-6 ratio make sure you get plenty of fish oil or oily fish in your diet you know if you're you know, things like you know vegetable oil as well if you have too much vegetable oil you know, you cook with vegetable. If you cook with vegetable, dump it now. For go home and throw it away. By the way, you know, cook with ghee, cook with uh, coconut oil, that sort of stuff. If you're baking, cook with olive oil. You know, if if that omega six ratio goes too high versus your omega three, again, that's a pathway for inflammation. Yeah. Everyone should be aware of, which is why it's so so important to have like fish oils in your diet in in, in modern diets. It's, I mean, it's one of the most well-researched things, and actually, I, I got educated again by Miles and Justin every week, that, um, yeah, flax seeds are a common alternative that actually isn't converted the same or treated the same as fish oil, which is an important one to talk about, because a lot it's of like the people show, yeah. use it. Yeah, so yeah. it's basically, from what I understand, it's a conversion ratio. It mm. actually uses flax seed to convert into DHA and EPA. <coughs> And it's like two to five percent on each, so you're not really getting the end product of the omega threes. You're not getting the same conversion as when you have the the fish oils straight. So yeah. you said you mentioned with fish oils, it's important the ratios in fish oils. I think a lot of people don't know about this. They just think, okay, I'll just take fish oil, pick up any old you know supplement off the shelf, and that they think that's fine. What? should they be looking for when they go into a supplement store what should they be looking for on the label for fish oils sure it's, it's a minefield yeah um yeah so <clears throat> what you have to look for is a supplement company which follows a few clear guidelines first of all it's a supplement company following good manufacturing practice so mm -hmm. gmp is a standard which we use for our supplement supplier uh, to make sure that they have rigorous standards in the extraction of the fish oil from the fish and second of all, that you're looking at the fish oil quality from a contamination point of view. So there's contamination of things like heavy metals, uh, pollutants which are in the fish livers, which we're extracting the oil from, and we need to have reassurance that those fish oils are completely contaminant free. Mm -hmm. So you're just getting the benefit of the omega-3 fatty acids only. And um, that, that process of rigorous uh, manufacturing needs to be applied across all supplements. Uh, and so we make sure we're aligned with our supplier who, who does that. Yeah, yeah, because there are a lot of supplements on the market which must not go through these regulations oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But no, I mean, personally, answer. I can't That's believe how yeah. they're on the market yeah. you well, know, and being sold to people. Yeah, yeah. it's a dirty industry. It, it is. It is. And it's not it's poor, G very poorly regulated. Good, good, good manufacturing practice is actually quite a hard. Um, a standard to get. You have to go through very various rigorous inspections by, by various agencies to make sure you're complying with very high standards. Is that standards. something that costs companies? Yeah. So oh, yeah. is that yeah, sure. the, one sure. of the reasons why it's sure. a little bit more companies expensive. don't? You've got, you got to yeah. pay for that. You get into an investigation from these international bodies or, yeah. or governmental bodies. There's supplements from Canada who are great. They're regulated. Supplements from the US who really drove this market. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know. It's all based on brand loyalty. Some of them subject themselves to FDA approval, some of them don't. And the vast majority don't. don't. You're going to pay more for the ones that do, obviously. Yeah. Um, that's it. You don't know what you're getting. You know, it's, you know, even the way the supplements have been handled, I mean, um, you know, with fish oils, for example, you know, you don't want oxidised LDL. If that fish oil is at any point, like, been heated and cooled and heated and cooled, it's sitting in this plastic thing, you're going to get issues with like very pro-inflammatory, damaging, you know, fat conversion to oxidized LDL. You don't want that. I mean, that's what you really want to avoid. You've got to be very, very careful with your fish oils. Yeah. yeah. You to the point where actually if you're going to go for substandard, just don't take it. Like invest much more money in the high fish. quality where they're yeah. painted to technologies to actually filter this thing Because I know a lot of people... A lot of people complain, like, our oh, supplements are so expensive, they just look for the cheapest one and think it's fine, but nah. really they they just don't take any if you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah especially officials, yeah, for sure. I think for the sure. way to look at it is if you're buying a car, you're always going to try to afford an Audi or Mercedes rather than a, a Skoda, okay? It's the same philosophy you do for supplements. If you want to have the best 
you get the best because it is much better quality. It's going yeah. to have much better effects on your body. The nutrients are going to be absorbed better. They're going to be utilized better. And that's going to have massive effects on your metabolism. Yeah. So it, it's thinking in, in that way will help a lot. A lot. Yeah. I think the the probably won't we have some them. questions uh, uh, from the audience. Gina, Gina wants to know, are BACC an essential supplement? You can scroll down and then there, uh, oh, there's a couple of questions down there. I thought we should take some audience questions right now. Sure. <laughs> sure. BCA, right? It's different different requirements, different people. Um, yeah, I mean, BCAAs are, the branch chain amino acids are great for providing the actual nutrients for muscle tissue recovery and repair. Um, I think that you get it in a standard amino acid uh, formulation, whey protein, pea protein will always meats. have, uh, meats even, will have branch chain amino acids anyway. Um, I think it's all about personal choice at the end of the day. Personally, my view is to get more of a complete protein profile. Um, which you can get in a powdered form or real food form. Um, some people prefer just BCAAs. There's no real justification for choosing one or the other, in, in my view. Um, but yeah. So as long yeah. as you've got like a few protein sources, you're going to cover that base. Yeah. I know sometimes, Miles, you've talked about essential amino acids yeah. and their role as well being slightly different. I, to be fair, I've always been confused on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your body always needs the eight or nine essential amino acids and then you make a whole load of other amino acids on top of that um, and that's based upon your B vitamins. So you make sure you have enough B vitamins to help in that conversion. Um, but essentially your, your main bulk of amino acids are going to come from your food and then supplemental based upon your training like we talked about. And I guess it depends on the level, you know, how often yeah. you're training. Exactly. If you're yeah. rolling exactly. two times exactly. a day, yeah. 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 you know, if yeah. you're... You're a special creature. Yeah. You need to track, you need to yeah. track that stuff. You, know? <laughs> you, need, to, you need to double... <laughs> you do. Double yeah. officials. You know? exactly. Test um, your amino acids. <laughs> Make sure you're all there, you know? Yeah. In case you didn't see that. There's <laughs> 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 yeah, no mega three yeah, ones. Well, yeah. yeah. you're getting enough. Okay, guys, we've got another question from Olivier. Hi Olivier, and he's asking, is it true that, do I need to take carbs th within 30 minutes after training to replenish, replenish the glycogen stocks? So that kind of ties in what we were talking about earlier. Um, well, it, it depends again on when's the next fight. When's the next, so are you having a recovery because the next fight's in three or four hours? Yes, you need well, to replenish your glycogen training. stores. Is, is, is the question about after a training session? Or yeah, so yeah, like after a training how session. How many times do you train a week? If you're training very frequently. What's the So someone was training and it's their only training session for the day. Oh, that's fine. So you can just have the protein and a standard meal afterwards and it's going to recover the glycogen source. So you don't need to worry about trying to get something no. in so fast? Not so fast, no. Your body's going to... Obviously, you need to replenish with the, with the new, uh, basic electrolytes and and sort of water, that's important for recovery as well. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the, the beverage intake. But so. essentially, if you're eating within two or three hours, that's fine. You're gonna be hungry after training anyway. Mm -hmm. You're gonna grab some Something food. It's, it's not, it, it, the issue's not, some, mm -hmm. not so much the, the carbohydrates at that point. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's very much dependent on Olivier's goals as well. Yeah. You know, if he's training to improve his body composition. Body composition. Yeah, it depends it's, where he is. If he, you know, if Olivier has thirteen percent body fat and he wants to get to eight, and his body's not too stressed out because he's not overtraining, yeah, put your carbs. It's mm, going to help, mm, mm. you know. But the, adding a little bit of carbohydrate, thirty grams of post training, or whatever it may be, will aid recovery. Okay. It will, you know, it will aid recovery, mm. but it depends on your goals. If Olivier's, okay. you know, mm. training once that day, but he's also training for six days of the week. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he probably wants a bit of carbohydrate there. It's going to help him go into mm. the next day of training. And the healthy carbs, too. Yeah, the starchy carbs, like you mentioned right before. Of carbs. Sure. Exactly, not it's none of these white sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah, A lot of people, I think, as well, I knew people from training who just kind of come back late at night, in you know, this late night session, get back at 10 o'clock, wouldn't bother eating. I mean, every time I've sort of skipped a meal after, eat after training, you know, no, that has been when I felt bad, you know. Yeah. And even if it's even if it's kind of late at night and I've got home late at night, I, I've always chosen to eat because you've trained for two hours and then you go to sleep in that mm. fasted state. Mm. I've always found that I've not felt too good the next day. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to um, food sensitivity. So, firstly, is food food sensitivity different to a food allergy? 
and should we care about if we have a food sensitivity or not really? So food sensitivity is something which your body is reacting to a food, but it's not an immediate reaction. It's a delayed reaction. So right. a food allergy is an immediate reaction within, within 10 minutes, a few minutes, or within an hour of eating a food. And a classic, classic example is having a peanut allergy. Mm-hmm. So you take a peanut and you get, get tight soreness in the, in the chest. That's a peanut allergy, and that is specific to a very small number of people. So food sensitivity is much more broader, and it is probably affecting around 60 to 70 percent of the population. Uh, so it's a very broader scope, and there's a lot of food sensitivities which people are sensitive to. Uh, predominantly, it's going to be gluten, dairy products, soybean, uh, nuts, and shellfish. Mm-hmm. So those are the top five categories of foods people are sensitive to. So could people just walk around day to day and not realise that they have these sensitivities? That's true. Or do, would they have any <laughs> symptoms? Or Well, yeah, there are symptoms which people can have, and you can also be asymptomatic and still have inflammation and things going on in the body which you're not aware of. So the first symptoms you may be getting are some things like bloating, gas, maybe a bit of acid reflux and digestion, maybe some constipation, diarrhoea, brain fog, lethargy... There's all sort of, sort of, uh, not not very clear signs of what's going on or yes. clear symptoms, but they come much later after eating the food. So you could be eating something in the morning, and these symptoms come like late in the day. So you don't really know the association. So you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know the association. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a relative judgment as well. Yeah, people can live their lives with a little bit of bloating, a little bit of constipation, a little bit of this. They think that's completely normal. Yeah. Mm. They think it's completely normal. So you know, it's a big relative aspect to this. I mean, in general. I mean, all the food sensitivities testing we've done here, we always find something interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, over the years, all the way that I've pushed into Man. my body, yeah. um, I mean, I've done testing all my life, you know, as an athlete and whatnot, um, but in recent years, I've really become sensitive to whey. You know, I, 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 it seems to have it now, I can't, I still can't. But everyone is, it? But, um, yeah. you know, like, it, it bloats me, I feel just a little bit of discomfort, and... Uh, you know, you can see that in my results, and that's a good thing for me to be, to avoid now, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But you know, I could be out there doing this, and I wouldn't really know because it's very minor. Yes. You know, but when well, that's really what the whole view on the context model is yeah. about, you know, it's taking well people. I'll still be well even though I got bloated or slightly covered or whatever, whatever it may be. But I'm not optimal. You know, we can remove right. these minor stresses on the body and give you more, give you more adaptation threshold give you more and so you can respond better to your training and that sort of stuff. It's training smarter, knowing yourself, having a better toolkit, you know. So um, generally, you know, everyone should really get tested for their food sensitivities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean testing in general, it's the future, it's coming. Yeah. You know, we're trying to, think, you know, we think it's the future, we're trying to build it, so yeah. Like, one thing I was going to add that Justin often you mentioned it about you know a lot of what we're doing is basically just quantifying stress you know so like yeah. food is a recovery element like it's supposed to help fuel you it's supposed to help be a good thing now if you're putting in food that's causing inflammation that's stress you know if you're exercising too frequently when your body can't deal with it that's stress if you're not having the right nutrients that's stress yeah. if you've got heavy metals that's stress so we're trying to look at that and to be honest I mean I, I personally work with a lot of the gyms um, and clinics that take on our testing service and, and, and Miles does a lot of the training for it and the amount of times I've seen whey on there it's almost every time the amount of times I've seen dairy on there it's almost every time um, and eggs as well and it's a combination of people not rotating their foods right which we actually do right. for people in mm. meals and there's genetic components so you may never have whey but you could have you could be predisposed to an allergy. Mm-hmm. I mean, why is that even that smart <laughs> anyway? I don't yeah, know why it's so dominant out there. You know, it's quite, it's quite sugar-like. Um, you know, all the leucine and what like it does. You know, you get an instant spike from having, you know, whey protein similar to having sugar. You know, so you wouldn't recommend yeah. whey. So pe- you say protein is very important. Yeah. But also you yeah. need to look at the type of you protein do. you're you having. You do. And it, depend- it depends on your goals. You know, if you're one of these, you know. 8% body fat train six days a week, yeah, have some way. You're going to get that insulin spike, it's going to aid recovery just like, you know, having carbohydrate would, you know, but if you want to improve your body composition, have an alternative, have like pea protein or have like a, a, a beef protein, you know, grass-fed 
very good quality one because you're not going to get the same insulin spikes of post exercise your body's not going to move from that you know glycogen depleted fat burning state where it's actually still using your body and metabolism is still kicked up as soon as you put like a you know you have an insulin spike it's going to move into a, into, into a glucose yeah. burning state is you're it, not going to lose the fat so is it just whey protein or sh are there others that you should be looking out for maybe not the best choices I mean, it's dairy in general way way more so, so dairy there's some interesting products. studies what about actually. soy protein what's your opinion on that um i think I know I think, a lot well, of men in general sure. are like, no, oh my god, soy, yeah. I'm going to turn into a woman or something. So. It's, it's not, the, the bioavailability of the soy protein isn't the size of things anyway. Um, I tend to avoid it, but I think the jury's out on whether it has like okay. economic effects. Um, probably, I don't recommend it myself as, yeah. a, no. as all. Um, yeah, there's, a few, there's a few publications out there which are, quite a few actually out there, saying how soy contributes to a lot of uh, conditions in the body insidiously without you knowing uh, which builds up over time and then suddenly all these soy based issues come out and uh, so I, I just generally don't recommend it okay. so. so stay away from soy yeah, everybody, sorry that, I think especially in Asia yeah. soy is quite a big thing it is. you did mention Mars because there's certain things like fermented soy so fermented soy is a product bit. but that's a, that's a different that's a type food. of food it's not for the protein it's for the benefits of the fermented aspects of soy which are different to different. Uh, protein yeah okay. so um, yeah it's, uh, that's something different just quickly coming back to um, food allergies so I know again I'm going to use JK as an example I know he recently <laughs> got um, his food sensitivity test with you guys and he mentioned to me that he's allergic to eggs, yet he had no idea, and he's been eating eggs probably every day for the past six years. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's a good example of maybe someone who's not rotated their foods, and it can be developed that way. I mean, the important thing for food sensitivity is not just to test it once. You know, you're looking at, reg like with a, a lot of things, you have to always see if things have gone back in balance, and like what you've changed is actually, you know, you have to <laughs> quantify that. So, I mean... Okay. You know, JK Hot, I mean, I'm not sure the maple syrup and toast was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, ideally, so JK... JK obviously you know, metabolizes carbohydrate very well. What, what uh, we know is, like, when we test him, is we're going to see, actually, you know, was it a genetic thing, or was it just because he didn't rotate his food? So he may be able to introduce it, but is right. it reintroduce it, but we want to test him again. You feeling Later better after yeah, I mean, cutting, rotating your eggs in your Yeah, actually, great. I trained really well every day last week. Excellent, yeah. Very well. So even I though a food recommend. might be healthy, That's it, it. it might not be good for you. Because a lot of people, I think, um, they, a lot of people like routine. So they find uh, <coughs> what diet works for them, but they'll eat the same thing every single day because they know it works for them. Yeah. Is that not really a good idea? Not smart. Not smart. You don't want to get too reliant. Yeah, rotating your diet, eating varieties. Is protein. it rotating pretty much everything, or is it just protein, or...? Even vegetables? Protein, everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Protein, okay. yeah. Vegetables, proteins, you need to have almost a different meal for going through each day, different days. Mm -hmm. So morning, say for example, for breakfast you have eggs, the next morning you have fish, the next morning you have Stay some other food. Bacon. Okay. Yes. Good quality bacon. <laughs> oh, we love like, bacon. I yeah. love it. It's great. You have quality bacon here. That's the point. Everyone eat more bacon. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> point. That's more steak. Breakfast is such steak an emotional well. point. Like we find talking to people on meal plans that actually when, when they try the breakfast we have, they really like it. But it is a bit of a mindset change and it's the hardest thing. People have the routine in the morning. It's a very diff oh, difficult. Yeah, I mean, that's one big one big. Interesting talking point actually, people get obsessed with like oats and that sort of stuff. <laughs> it really is like a, a breakfast for dummies, quite truly. Like, uh, you, pro, pro, you know, research is showing you know, protein is very important. You know, large amounts of protein in your diet, you know. You, um, yeah, because I see a, a, a high amount of, you know, p people mm. in the personal training industry, you know, claim they're like at the top of their game and they they will be like, right, every day, oats breakfast, massive bowl of oats, this is what you should be eating. Yeah, I mean, they, they'll probably get away with it more than other people would. Yeah. Yeah, some people wouldn't get away with it so much, but in general, I think, yeah, lower, you know, research shows that lower carbohydrate diets can be more beneficial. It's better for neurotransmitters. It's better for your, you know, your blood glucose levels, you know. Um, yeah, if you want to maximise your 
optimize your body composition, have a low calorie, low carbohydrate breakfast, and build your carbohydrate later in the day. Don't cook carbohydrate. Carbohydrate's a friend, apart from maple syrup on French toast. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> I mean, one, one thing I found like with, with jiu-jitsu is you burn a hell of a lot of calories, you know, and the one thing I used to find that even if I weight train and I do jiu-jitsu as well, you know, I, it's ha sometimes hard for me to keep on the right weight or maintain my weight, so there is always a battle there of getting in enough calories, but there are other ways you can do it, there are other things that have a high calorie content, like I know you talk about like olive oil, and what ways of basically making sure you're getting enough calories, because if you're training a lot, you know, and you want to maintain a certain weight because that's what you feel like you fight best at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's looking at those snacks and nuts and things like that where you can actually keep, keep maintaining calories. Yeah. I know oats is very much as a, you've got quite a bit of calories, you can add some protein in there and people look at it as a convenience, all-in-one food, but it's just not ideal if, if you really... It's definitely not an all-in-one food, everyone. It's mm. just it's just carbs. Oats doesn't yeah. have any nutrients. It's just carbohydrates, starch, starch both clouds to sugar. You're not getting any benefit from oats just from glucose, which is going to be the common denominator from oats. Um, it's, it's as Justin said, it provides a sugar spike. Um, I, I'm not a fan of it, and I think it's best to have, as Justin has recommended, a protein-rich breakfast with vegetables, which is good what fats. we do as part of our Ideally. Yeah, fats, yeah. with fats and so on, and it provides a balanced meal. This is a balanced approach of the macronutrients. Everyone just needs to focus on proteins, the fats, and the carbs in a balanced way. Yeah. Every single meal, you're trying to get a balance of all three. If, if you're going to have, if, I mean, if you're going to have a higher protein meal, I it before bed. Against the, the show, you know, it's, it's going to improve the quality of your sleep, improve the quality of your, your recovery. Like, you know, inc you know, increases parasympathetic activity during the sleep, the quality of the sleep and recovery. Is that so, higher carb? You mean yeah. higher carb? Higher carb. Higher carb. <laughs> <laughs> you said <laughs> protein. <laughs> there we yeah. go. You're <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> actually got an ear infection. I can't actually... <laughs> he does actually have an ear infection, so, you know, if he says something, yeah. just ignore him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, we have uh, another question here from Lewis saying... What do you recommend to eat before evening training? I normally have my training at 8.30 p.m., so I can't have a proper meal before training. He doesn't have time. He normally has one or two bananas, and only after his training at 10.30 p.m., he has like a soup or a little salad. Also, tying in with, what if someone doesn't have the time to, you know, get a full, you know, meal? What can they do if they're waking up early for training or they just don't have time? What's something more convenient? Because not everyone has time to, you know, cook a cook a full meal with all those sure. things in it. Sure. I mean, uh, again, it's, you know, there's plenty of recent research as well, you know, is, you know, what's more beneficial before training, fats, carbs, or protein? It's the protein, you know, get the protein in. The whole carbo loading dichotomy is kind of dying off a little bit now. They're realizing people are very different. It, what really does shine through is just getting that protein in consistently, in you know, in consistent frequency throughout the day. Um, in terms of convenience, there are convenient ways to do it. You know, the protein powders out there are convenient foods. You know, you can always carry around chicken breasts and berries or something in your bag. But it gets I'm sure you're all going to be doing yeah, that. It gets expensive. Around some chicken it gets expensive. In your back pocket. Not really <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. You know, but you know, I just. <laughs> it's hard to compromise on, I guess. Yeah. Is it? So, He's a special yeah. creature. <laughs> I have actually done that. I kid you not. I have actually been to train the session. It's, it's like you're always compromising, you know, um, for value, convenience. You, you, you know. There's no magic kind of substitute, but there are some around. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, are, there are good substitutes. I think protein powders. Oh. Of course, we <laughs> recommend. Uh, yeah. Cause, cause yeah. Actually, just so nice. Talk yeah. about your, cause you, you told me the other week about about the breakfast you have that you mixed. You, sure. you know, with the pea protein, you get some greens really? in there. You get some coconut. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a vegan coconut. breakfast. I don't have time to sit down and cook some fresh salmon. And have like a yeah. poached egg on top, or cook mackerel, and I think a lot of people also the thought of having fish for breakfast might be a bit too much. Yeah, for it's a good people. breakfast though. It's or even steak. Breakfast. I haven't got time to cook a steak, you know. So yeah. for me, I'm just trying to get as many antioxidants, uh, you know, you know anti-inflammatory foods into my diet in the most convenient yeah. way with a big load of protein. So this is instead of say Lewis who has two bananas yeah. before training. Yeah, this would bananas. be a good. 
Yeah, sure, as sure. Well. So, I mean, yeah, you could use the same at the time. I mean, my breakfast is, you know, I have, uh, I don't want the insulin spike from whey, so I have like a beef protein mix. I'm mixing some pea protein. Mm -hmm. I'm mixing um, some like greens, um, a green powder. Mm -hmm. It's all dry. It's very easy. It's just like scoop, scoop, scoop. I throw in some frozen berries. I throw in some macadamia nuts. The macadamias are good in terms of like that six three omega ratio and. I put a load of coconut cream or coconut milk or something in there. You get the cacao in there. I shake it up and I pour it into my bowl. And I'm Tastes part, good. Part of my spoon and part of drinking out the yeah. bowl. It does you know, actually I got my, taste good. I got my, my, my two-year-old two okay. son sitting here. He's in there as well. <laughs> you know, you that's. I mean, it's, I can I can do breakfast in ten minutes and it's a very very good healthy. Yeah, something breakfast. that. Still yeah, good so, I mean that you. that sort of thing applies. You know, if you're short on time, you're coming out of work. You know. Carry a small couple of sachets of. Yeah. of uh, We're just of, like blocking uh, them out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. We, we have ways to do it. Yeah. We, we have like a pea protein, but it's got a fibre in there, it's got a mineral complex in there. Even if you have that with some nuts, you know, you've got, you've got quite a, you know, a few calories, you've got sure. the fibre in there, it's not going to be fastly absorbed, and okay. you're getting what you need. And it's convenient, you know, it's not, this is the thing, sometimes I think people think like, oh, Let's replace meals with shakes. You, people having six shakes a day, you know, they need to be eating. Yeah, it needs to be rotating the diet. No matter what, there's it's no substitute genius. for real food. Yeah. So if you have the yeah. option, always go for real food, sure. and a shake's kind sure. of only if you really sure. last resort. Sure. Oh, it's yeah, no, sure. It's, it's convenient. You know? yeah. We're not trying, like trying to like push our products, so you know, it's convenient food, but it's actually really healthy at the same time. <laughs> We're not trying to push our products. But we are anyway, <laughs> because we love it. Sorry. Real food, everyone. Real food. Uh, but yeah, I mean, stuff like, stuff like greens, though, that's difficult. You're going to have to eat like two kilo of like broccoli to get like a couple of spoonfuls of that. So that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's a broad spectrum of greens from all over the place. All sorts of polyphenols, mm. all sorts of antioxidants. Mm -hmm. broad. Yeah, so that's difficult to replace, as is the same for like fish oils in, the same, in a similar respect. Yeah. You, know. you guys said to me something the other week that stuck me as well. Is they said kind of like you can get away with a lot more if you're having a lot of greens in your diet, and that means sort of topping it up. As yeah. Gem. And for the for the guys training six days a week, you're stupid if you're not doing it. To be honest, you've got to get those antioxidants in your diet. You've got to look after those amino that amino acid profile. You've got to keep that omega three ratio up. Even your vitamin D. Vitamin D is really key as well. Really, really important. You know, my my good friend. Who's a performance coach at TGB Rowing? And they're testing their athletes every three days or so for vitamin D. Mm -hmm. If that drops, body composition drops, performance drops, you start gaining visceral fat, these sort of things, and it depletes with stress. You know, exercises and stress on, on the body. Yeah. So that's really important. You know, make sure you're supplementing vitamin D, especially in that sort of thing. So obviously, you there's a lot track of. It, measure it. There's a lot of supplements out there, a lot of different ones good for you for different reasons mm. but just to simplify it for people if you had to pick like five supplements that are the most important that people should be concentrating on what would they be i know it's hard to kind of yeah. you know narrow it down but just so people aren't so confused and like not sure people who don't want to be sure. taking like 25 <coughs> pills at every meal time sure. I think I've got a top five, I don't, I don't know what yeah, these sure. guys, but um, for me it's always vitamin D, vitamin D. Uh, always a fish oil, um, always get your electrolytes, so electrolytes are basically uh, magnesium, potassium, chloride, maybe a tiny bit of sodium, but these are the minerals which your body's losing every time you sweat. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the more you exercise, the more you're going to lose magnesium. Magnesium is essential for sleep, for blood sugar regulation, for gut health, for heart health. You need a lot of magnesium. So, electrolytes, definitely take a probiotic. I think a lot of people are not getting enough fermented foods, and that's another something which, again, is a separate discussion, but getting a lot of fermented foods for the bacteria in your gut really supports your health on a whole different level. Um, and finally, I suppose, is just making sure you have a good protein powder. I mean, what we do is this, this one is great, beef protein, there's lots of other ones, pea protein, but that's supporting the recovery, post-training. Uh, when you don't have time for a meal, you get the, the powder as well. Yeah. So, um, 
so, but there's lots of others according to your genetics. So some people may need extra something else. So if you have a test with us, we can tell you extra things you may need. Yeah. But those are the top five. Okay. I mean, that, so that's one of the key things, like even omega-3, man, you, you know, Justin, you take a lot of omega-3, and I know, obviously, yeah. you're born upon it, you know, we're working hard, you, you know, you, the, deg- the amount you need varies on your lifestyle. Yeah. Same with vitamin D, and like that's why it's so important to test it. So you could be supplement it and just be well underneath the mark. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. If you eat kilo steak every day, <laughs> stuck with your omega three. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, even with vitamin D, it's, it's a minefield. You know, yes, supplement it, but how much to supplement? You don't yeah. want to. People are different. You know, to get that optimal range of like sixty to eighty, let's say. Um, that you want to see any test results. Some people are going to take 2,000 IUs, some people are going to take 15, 20,000 IUs. You don't know. You don't want too little and you don't want too much. If you've got too yeah. much, you're going to have all sorts of sleep you know, disturbances. You know, vitamin D, really important for inflammation as well, it modulates inflammation. Um, so, yeah, it's tricky. Test for vitamin D, test for vitamin D. Yeah. Especially if the guy's training more than four times a week, test it, yeah. test it. Okay, well. There's so much to talk about, and I do actually have a lot more questions, but we've run over by 20 minutes, so we're going to have to wrap this up. Um, any questions uh, from the live video, we will just send you guys a message and answer all of your questions, but I just want to say thank you to the whole team here from Bionoquantix. Thank you. Just one more question, though. Gina wants to know, can you recommend the best vegan protein source? <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. My fiance Gina, yeah, thrown in the curveball. Convenience. <laughs> <laughs> this guy read that at Justin. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know we talk about the pea protein. Convenience wise, it's pea. Pea. The pea's good. Pea's got good biobank. Better than rice. It's got a good amino acid profile. That's a big problem with vegan. <laughs> yes. um, pea protein, food wise, uh, Well, um, if, you do, if you're doing a real food source, it's going to be like lentils, chickpeas, um, but as opposed to beans, I'm not a big fan of beans, uh, so lentils, chickpeas are much more bioavailable as a, as a protein source, but they're not complete proteins, that's the point. So if you want a complete protein, it's always animal protein as opposed to vegetarian protein, so... Threw down the corner there, Mars. It's, it's, it's a tricky one, guys. It's a tricky position <laughs> being vegan. You have got to watch your amino yeah. acid profile as well so, as other vitamins and yeah. nutrients as well. Yeah. You know, supplement, supplement your amino acids. You know, mm-hmm. you know, your tryptophan is quite difficult to get from a vegan diet. Yeah, so you can actually combine lentils with grains, and then you're going to get a balanced amino acid profile. So okay. cer- certain grains and certain, say, lentils will actually complete the amino acid profile you get. But then you have to be very particular about which grains you use, because I'm not a big fan of wheat, so it would be non-gluten type of wheat, non-gluten grains, for example, would be the ones so I So this is probably something yeah. you probably have to seek additional yeah. advice. As additional advice yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I was going to mention um, was, yeah, at Concerts we're doing a 50% off uh, functional bioquantics appraisal of miles. So any of you BJJ athletes out there, you can actually come and find a bit more information about what to eat around the meals personally, and you can actually, you know, know this stuff. Like, we all invest money, invest it in yourself, and actually find the answer. And, you know, that's really going to pay dividends in your training and your health. Um, and Miles is a guy to do it. Anything Thanks. else you guys would like to add as we wrap this up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your tone was firm enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we can give the guys, uh, I don't know, 10% off if you go to Beyond the Quantics website, use the code 4 stripes 10 whatever you want. Yeah. Let's get that on the system. 10%. <laughs> 4 Stripes 10. All the information will be on the 4 Stripes page. Thank you for joining us today. Any questions, just uh, send us a message next on camp. Facebook. Camp. Uh, JK, yes, the next camp will be next year, April 1st and 2nd. You don't want to miss it. Um, I found out who's going to be coming to teach and massive name is Jiu Jitsu. You're not going to say it though, are you? No, no secret, but <laughs> you guys won't regret it. It's going to be amazing, okay? Yeah. So, of course. Great. <laughs>